Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about how to transfer files to and from Unix machines. And in the context of uh, ME5013 here at UTSA, uh, we're really talking about how to get files on and off of Shamu, uh, our Sun Linux cluster. However, this could be used to uh, move files from any uh, remote server uh, to your local machine or to your, from your local machine to a remote, remote server. So at first we'll talk about uh, the Linux way to do it, or the Unix way to do it, is to use a secure copy, which basically works like regular copy, except one of the machines will be um, a, a remote machine. And of course, uh, we need to pay special attention on Shamu uh, to use an uppercase P uh, for the port number, and then specify the port number of the head node 1209. Um, the default is port 22. Uh, that's the default port for both secure copy and SSH uh, on all Unix machines. So uh, I'll go ahead and give you an example of this. Uh, right now I'm on my local machine, just uh, my local Mac uh, that has a host name of Lagrange. Um, what I'm going to do is create a file by actually uh, redirecting the output of, of host name uh, to a file that I'll just call hostname.txt and you know we can view what's in hostname.txt just uh, of course my local hostname so we want to move this file over to Shamu uh, what we would do is uh, say scp hostname.txt I'm sorry uh, we also need to specify the port number so we're going to say dash p 1209 then the file hostname.txt my username on Shamu at shamu.utsa, I'm sorry, dot coe dot utsa dot edu, and then we put a colon and we can specify exactly where we want to put it. So I'm going to put it in my home directory slash me5013. That's exactly where I want to put it. So it'll prompt me for my password. It transfers the file over. Okay. Of course, we're still on my local machine, so now I'm going to SSH into Shamu to verify that we actually moved the file. So now we're on Shamu, and if we go into the folder ME5013, there should be a file named hostname. There it is, and if we look at it, with head, we can see that it in fact did copy over. So another tool we might use to get files uh, from remote servers are uh, is wget. So wget stands for webget. It means uh, it's a non non interactive network downloader. So we'll we'll use it to download things that are posted to web pages directly and bring them to our local machine uh, or or uh, or remote remote machine. Uh, if we're logged into it. So uh, non-interactive just simply means that it, we can run it in the background uh, without the user being logged in or uh, specifically telling it what, what to do. So uh, we're logged into Shamu here. So we're going to go ahead and use wget here to get the files, the actual uh, PDFs that we're using to view this lecture. So we put in the direct URL to those files along with the wget uh, there, it's relatively small file, so it quickly downloads them, and uh, there you can see they are. So other ways we might use to uh, get files would be graphical user interfaces uh, for uh, FTP or SSH clients or S FTP clients. Uh, a couple of those uh, that I've used before are CyberDuck and Fugu for Mac. Uh, I know Windows has a free version, uh, WinSCP. And then of course uh, FileZilla, which may be the best version, uh, I, I don't know for sure, but uh, simply for the fact that it is cross-platform. So uh, you basically use the same uh, application on Linux, Windows, and Mac. And uh, so therefore you won't have to learn a new client as you go from one machine to, to the other. So for that reason alone, that may be the, the best option. 
Um, my favorite option nowadays is to use Dropbox. So of course you'll have to have a Dropbox account to use this, but if you do have a Dropbox account, uh, this is by far the easiest way uh, to, to get uh, files transferred from your local machines, of course, where you have the, the local Dropbox client running, and uh, then any, any, um, uh, any files on, on, your, on your remote server, your Linux server. So I'll, I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to get this up and running on, on Shamu. So if we just copy and paste the uh, exact command that I have in the in in the uh, PDF there in, into the Unix terminal, um, that'll go ahead and, and download everything we need. It actually uses wget itself. Uh, it's going to download all the files we need. Okay. Um, so then, uh, it, it if you notice, it changed directory back to the home directory, and uh, then all we need to do is run the first time this Dropbox Damien and the first time it's going to go ahead and pop up a window and ask you if you have a Dropbox account or if you don't have one you can you can create one um, but I do have one and so I'll go ahead and fill out the information Okay, so I don't want to upgrade my Dropbox account. Uh, go ahead and install with the typical settings. I do not want to open my Dropbox folder now. So now if we ls the home drive, you should see there's a Dropbox folder there. And if we go into it, uh, you can see there. there's my... Uh, the folders I have. Um, we could actually create a new folder there. Um, let's say ME5013. And then if we go back to our local machine and sync our Dropbox folder, I believe we need to start the the uh, Dropbox Damien here, and unfortunately, until I give you more instruction, you'll have to do this every time you log in. But we'll learn uh, later in the course um, how to do that. And actually, what you want to do is you want to start it with an ampersand on the end so that it runs in the background, and then it'll continue to run. Uh, so if we uh, go into the Dropbox folder. Uh, there you can see the files and folders. Uh, the new folder I created, ME5013, uh, we can go into there. And we can just create a file. Um, if we go to our local, our local client, uh, in this case on my, on my Mac, if I open up the Dropbox folder, uh, there you see the the folder ME5013 and new file is in there. So this is how you get uh, Dropbox up and running on your on your uh, Shamu.